Sir, do I have your permission to declare the convocation open? With the permission of the Chancellor, I declare the fifth annual convocation of Ambedkar University, Delhi, open. I have on behalf of the Ambedkar University Delhi, I extend a warm welcome to the Chancellor to preside over the convocation and to His Holiness the Dalai Lama to deliver the fifth convocation address. Honorable Chancellor, Chief Guest, Your Holiness the Dalai Lama, my colleagues, my dear graduates, my students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fifth annual convocation of Ambedkar University, Delhi. I am particularly honored to welcome amidst us His Holiness the Dalai Lama, 
who is the chief guest this morning. I also welcome our chancellor, the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Sri Najib Jang. Established as a university for the social science and humanities, AUD has completed eight years of its life and about five cohorts of graduates have already passed out. About 1,300 young people have graduated out of AUD in the first four convocations held in the last four years. Another 549 students will graduate in the fifth annual convocation this morning and will earn their PhD, MPhil, MA, MBA, MDES, BA Honours and postgraduate diplomas in various fields of studies such as economics, development studies, development practice, psychology, psychotherapy, women's and gender studies, business administration, education, environment and development, early childhood care and education, English, history, psychology, so sociology, mathematics, Hindi, social design, social entrepreneurship, publishing, film studies, literary art, visual art, performance studies, and the social sciences and humanities. The university has still now been predominantly focused on postgraduate and research programs. Of the total of 549 graduating this morning, the BA Honours programs account for only 169, just over 30 percent. As many as 338 of those graduating this year, that is more than 60 percent, are from the master's programs. There are 22 graduating out of MPhil programs and 19 out of the postgraduate diploma programs. I'm happy to share with you that this year we have our first ever doctoral graduate, Ms. Kumari Jyoti Gupta, who is getting her PhD in Hindi. Another of our doctoral students, this one in history, successfully went through her PhD via OSA examination just the day before yesterday. But it was a bit too late for us to process a degree for award this morning. It's remarkable that both these candidates are women. Indeed, Indeed, women constitute as many as 66% of those who are graduating this year. And this is, this is consistent with the trend in the past years as well. Once again, welcome to the fifth annual convocation of Ambedkar University, Delhi. Sir. I request the deans of the schools to present to you the graduates of the respective programs of their schools whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree or diploma to which I request they may be admitted. I request the graduates from the School of Undergraduate Studies to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Bachelor of Arts with honors in economics, in English, in history, in mathematics, in psychology, in sociology, in social sciences and humanities, whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Economics, in English, in History, in Mathematics, in Psychology, in Sociology, in Social Sciences and Humanities. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from the School of Business, Public Policy and Social Entrepreneurship to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts in Social Entrepreneurship and those of Postgraduate Diploma in Publishing whose name are given in the list 
and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts in Social Entrepreneurship, and those of postgraduate diploma in publishing. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Master of Arts in Visual Art. <coughs> Sorry. I request the graduates from the School of Culture and Creative Expressions to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Masters of Master of Arts in Visual Art, in Literary Art, in Performance Studies, and in Film Studies, whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degrees, to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Master of Arts in Visual Art, in Literary Art, in Performance Studies, and in Film Studies. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from School of Design to rise and keep standing. So, I present to you the graduates of Master of Design in Social Design whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Master of Design in social design. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from the School of Development Studies to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Postgraduate Diploma in Development Studies and those of Master of Arts in Development Studies, whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of the postgraduate diploma and those for Master of Arts in Development Studies. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from the School of Education Studies to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Postgraduate Diploma in Education, Early Childhood Care and Education, Master of Arts in Education, Early Childhood Care and Education, and Master of Arts in Education, whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degrees to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of postgraduate diploma in education, early childhood care and education, Master of Arts in Education, Early Childhood Care and Education, and Master of Arts in Education. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from the School of Human Ecology to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of the Postgraduate Diploma in Environment and Development and those of Master of Arts in Environment and Development whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified 
for the award of postgraduate diploma in environment and development and those for master of arts in environment and development thank you sir i request the graduates to be seated i request the graduates from the school of human studies to rise and keep standing <clears throat> Sir, I present to you the graduates of Master of Philosophy in Psychotherapy and Clinical Thinking in Women's and Gender Studies in Development Practice and those of Master of Arts in Psychology, Psychosocial Clinical Studies and in Gender Studies whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Master of Philosophy in Psychotherapy and Clinical Thinking, in Women's Gender Studies, in Development Practice, and those of Master of Arts in Psychology, Psychosocial Clinical Studies, and in Gender Studies. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. I request the graduates from the School of Liberal Studies to rise and keep standing. Sir, I present to you the graduates of Doctor of Philosophy in Hindi, Master of Philosophy in Hindi, Master of Philosophy in History, and those of Master of Arts in Economics, in English, in History, and in Sociology, whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the degree to which I request they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of Doctor of Philosophy in Hindi, Master of Philosophy in Hindi, Master of Philosophy in History, and those of Master of Arts in Economics, in English, in History, and in Sociology. Thank you, sir. I request the graduates to be seated. Sir, I request the graduates whose names are given in the list and who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of various degrees, diplomas of this university may be admitted to the respective degree diploma in absentia. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, I admit the students who have been assessed and found qualified for the award of various diplomas, degrees in absentia. Your Holiness, Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished faculty, students, friends from the press. In the presence of His Holiness, I do not think anyone is qualified to speak. So I will limit this address to a few words. The first is that uh, in the eight years of your existence, this university has done remarkably well. I do not think that there is any other university, particularly a state university, that has made such measurable steps in progress <laughs> in academic achievement and the struggle to develop and maintain first-class infrastructure. So, Sham, uh, let me congratulate you. <laughs> to all of you students who are present here, let me just say that as you listen to His Holiness, you are listening just not to a moral voice of India, but indeed of the world today. This, this land and this country 
the history of 6,000 to 7,000 years has been a history full of moral force. This is the land of Mahavir. This is the land of Buddha. This is the land of Nanak and Kabir. It's the land of Farid and Baba Bullesha. It is also the land of Gandhi. And today, over the last half century and more, we claim it is also the land of the Dalai Lama. I truly believe that India has been blessed and all of you children are blessed to be in his company today. I don't have to say anything more. We need to listen to him with respect and with reverence. Thank you very much. Sir, with your permission, I would like to introduce the chief guest. Honorable Chancellor, my dear graduates, my colleagues and students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the chief guest of the convocation is conventionally part of the Vice Chancellor's responsibilities. I am truly overawed this morning by the immensity and gravity of this task that is expected of me. It will be an act of sheer audacity to even attempt to introduce His Holiness the Dalai Lama to an audience like this. His Holiness needs, truly speaking, needs no introduction. He is so much loved and revered by millions, young and old, of all nationalities, of all walks of life. However much I try, I will never be able to introduce to you even a tiny fraction of the significance of the life and work of His Holiness. In these difficult times when the entire humanity and the planet itself are facing the most testing of circumstances, there are only a few voices of sanity and wisdom that guide us in, this, in the right direction. Among them is His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the most inspiring among spiritual leaders of our times. As a temporal leader of the Tibetan people, the policies of His Holiness have been equally admirable. His Holiness inspired, influenced, and guided four generations of Tibetan people in exile in India and elsewhere, in their well-being and in their spiritual growth, particularly through their remarkably humane and compassionate Tibetan central school system. Educators in India and elsewhere draw important lessons from this school system. Exactly 27 years ago, almost to this very day, on the 10th of December 1989, His Holiness was in Oslo, receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, which he said he accepted as a tribute to someone he described as the man who founded the modern tradition of nonviolent action for change, that is Mahatma Gandhi. In his acceptance speech, His Holiness said, and I quote, as a Buddhist monk, my concern extends to all members of the human family and indeed, to all sentient beings who suffer. I believe all suffering is caused by ignorance. People inflict pain on others in the selfish pursuit of their happiness or satisfaction. Yet, true happiness comes from a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. We need to cultivate a universal responsibility for one another and the planet we share. Although I have found my own Buddhist religion helpful in generating love and compassion even for those who consider our enemies, I am convinced that everyone can develop a good heart and a sense of universal responsibility with or without religion." Unquote. We at AUD have been deeply influenced by the key phrase universal responsibility that His Holiness propounds. The teaching and research programs of our university and indeed the institutional culture that we have been striving so hard to create and sustain are based also on the key principles of universal responsibility and engaged scholarship. We are immensely fortunate that we have His Holiness here amidst us this morning 
as the chief guest in the fifth convocation of Ambedkar University, Delhi. It is my honor and privilege to request Your Holiness to deliver the convocation address. Ladies and gentlemen, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. I want to seek permission to add this. With this, it's helpful to see the faces of these young student, and of course, those old, old professors or teachers. <laughs> so when I see, I see the audience face, then I have more sort of enthusiasm to talk. Uh, so sometimes you see certain sort of whole, dark. And then sometimes I feel whether I am talking to ghost or human being. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, respected elder brothers and the younger, bright brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Whenever uh, I talk, I always consider we are same. We are part of seven billion human beings. The way we born, the way we die, same. No formality. Uh, so I don't like formality. Uh, I really, I said, because of form today, talk to human to human being like that. Now, firstly, uh, I want to, because of congratulations, those young students, is it, who now I think. Kasa. Graduates. Graduates. You see, I think you made I think a lot of effort and particularly I think the time uh, near because of the examination, more serious study, according to my own experience. You see, till the so date finalized my final examination, then I really make a lot of effort. Before that I'm quite lazy. <laughs> so I think uh, we are the same human being. I think you also have the sort of same sort of experiences. So now you achieved a uh, certain goal, uh, degrees. So I would, uh, I would like to congratulate And then also I want to thank teachers uh, I think several years, you see, you really uh, take care of these young brothers, sisters, and educate them. So I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Now, out of limitless, I said, we call sentient beings, that means uh, beings or who have experience of suffering or pains or pressure. So that includes limitless animals, birds, fish. Uh, all have sort of same feeling, same experience. Therefore, all have same right uh, to be happier one. No disturbances. Now we human beings are something very special. We have this special brain. Therefore, we have this sophisticated language and script. 
So, the brain is something, human brain is something very, very special. So now, in order to utilize, or in order to kasota, kasota bring in vachasa sethyachi. In order to realize the full, um, our potential that, uh, of the brain fully. Oh. Then the education is very, very important sort of instrument or method. You see, to kasota level, level vachasa sethyachi. To, to realize the full potential of our brains. So education, very important. I think education, generally education, I think really makes big differences among humanity. I think several, uh, maybe I think a few millions years ago, you see we, just a small community, so no education, I think even no religion. Uh, so then, at that time, I think everybody very equal. Small community, whatever they get, share together, and work together. No concept of leadership. Then eventually, population increased. And also, I think farming system uh, developed. Then is some uh, sort of mischievous people come, mischievous activities, stealing like that, bully like that. So then people, you see, uh, felt, oh, we need leader, leadership. At that time, I think no education. So in order to become leadership, like other animals, like other social animals, the leading sort of the being, mainly physical strength. So that's why, that is, I feel, the male dominance come. Even, I think, religious institution, also there are some sort of, I said, because of influence, where, influence of male dominance. Then education comes. Education brings equality. Education really, I think, brings more equal. So then, for example, the modern time, many leaders, able leaders, uh, come from female. So now, today, I think the existing education system, uh, according to many of my friends, you see, we have the same view the existing modern education system not adequate in order to create happy individual through that way, happy family, happy society, happy uh, humanity. I think this very moment we, uh, I think, enjoy peace and friendship, smile this very moment, same planet, same human being, lot of suffering. This suffering, most case, created by human being themselves. And scientists, now they, some scientists, you see, investigate the reaction of infant child when that child saw some picture, more compassionate attitude, more negative attitude. So infant child, uh, five, six months old, language not yet developed. When, you see, the child, I also saw, you see, that the child, when uh, that child is going to see, the, seeing uh, the picture, more compassionate sort of attitude, two children helping each other. And that sort of picture shows the child smiling, happy. 
then same child, another sort of uh, cartoon picture. You see, two young uh, children, child, negative attitude one another. But that uh, picture shows a scene by that child. Oh, that child clearly expressed unhappiness. So therefore, uh, these scientists concluded basic human nature is more compassionate. Then another factor, I think a person constantly experience anger, hatred, fear. They say actually eating our immune system. Whereas person who have constantly experienced compassion, love, uh, these things, the body element goes right, remain very good the balanced way, very good for our health. So these days we ca we sort of saying the uh, in order to have healthy body, we need healthy mind. So then, question, how to develop healthy mind? Education alone, existing education alone, not necessary. Correct, right? Not very sure. You see, to... I just okay. Acha domino. I think this also is a additional sort of problem for heat. <laughs> when we carrying debate. Usually we do this and like that. <laughs> so now, <yeah. laughs> So now today, I think uh, on the basis of human nature, more compassionate, now our education should include education about warm-heartedness. Not, of course, all major religious tradition carry same message, message of love, forgiveness, tolerance. But still, I think various different religious major, I guess major religious tradition now exist on this planet, I think over 2,000 years. Uh, uh, but still a lot of prop, lot of sort of mischievous people there. A worst thing, even among religious believers, you see, sometimes create more problem. So now, uh, in education field, on the basis of scientific finding and our common experience and common sense, I think we can teach, we can learn. Om heartedness is key factor for happy individual and so on. So, whether believer or non-believer, you see, everybody wants happy life. So material facility provides us physical comfort, not mental comfort. I have some sort of friend, uh, I think most probably billionaire, very rich, but when we talk and become closer, then they uh, express to me a lot of complaint. As a day, plenty of money there, but as an individual human being, very unhappy human being. So it clearly shows material facility alone uh, will not sort of bring inner sort of happiness or joyfulness. 
So then, if you go, if you rely on this inner value, rely on religious faith, then firstly, there are so many different religious traditions. And secondly, out of seven billion human beings, about one billion non-believer. So therefore, now in according to Indian sort of thought, understanding the secular is, I think, a wonderful, uh, wonderful secular education way. Secular way, I think, very, very, very good. So the secular ethics was ethics, secular way. But in the West, some of my friend. Uh, they told me secular means disrespect to religion. So it is understandable during French Revolution, Bolshevik Revolution, and the Chinese Communist Revolution, you see, there are some tendency, some kind of negative attitude towards religion. But actually, I think, you see, out of their ignorance and not very clear, what is religion? Love. Affection is religion. So all religion carry that sort of message. So nobody logically you cannot sort of against human love or human affection. So now here the French Revolution and the Bolshevik Revolution and so on, I think they actually very much against the existing religious institution, not religion. Uh, so in any way, so in the West, you see some people, some of my friend is telling me, or oh, using secular ethics is not very uh, suitable. Uh, so whether we call, uh, in, in this country, you see the secular means respect all religions and also respect non-believer. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So therefore, in any way, whether secular or universal value, universal ethics, that I think should include in our education uh, field. So now in order to, uh, in order to or is it a, educate, this inner value, we need uh, fuller knowledge about the whole system of our mind, about our emotions. Uh, then uh, you can tackle these destructive emotion and you can further strengthening the positive, constructive emotions. So in that respect, I think ancient Indian knowledge, I think a lot of sort of words today, the Kasuda, a lot, lot of words today, explanation or identify different emotions and its causes, and its effect. So it is very useful, like a map about emotion. Uh, if you, uh, if you Kasuda, develop this emotion, it reach a lot of uh, I say, negative thing. If this emotion uh, develop a lot of beneficial, uh, then each emotion, there are causes, uh, conditions. So these uh, should not consider as a religious matter, although these information come from religious text, but now should not consider these are part of religion but should consider academic subject in order to develop healthy mind. So you Indian have this potential. I think over a thousand years, this potential there. Now, unfortunately, modern India is, a, I think, much neglected. And even spiritual sort of uh, community, they carry rituals. Uh, not much pay attention for study these things. I think uh, we Tibetan, I think we remain isolated. 
So I think over thousand years, we kept, you see, this knowledge, uh, which introduced by Shantarakshita, 8th century. Shantarakshita, one of the top scholars of Nalanda institution, great philosopher, great logician. It is understandable, oh, so it is logically. You see, those people who emphasize logic, then reason consider very important. So not just faith or belief. So Buddha himself, according to Sanskrit tradition, Buddha himself, you see, told, uh, told his follower, or oh, oh my follower, monks, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So many Nalanda master, they rejected Buddha's own teaching. If you accept this teaching, it goes against the reason. So like Nagarjuna, uh, Chantakirti, they clearly mention in certain Buddhist teaching, certain text. So we cannot accept this. I think that's, so this shows, you see, we very much emphasis on reason, the reality. So this is come from uh, sort of religious sort of literature, but we should consider these are academic subject. So it should be part of academic, part of what's the secular education. I think in this country, I think easily can do. So, uh, so I hope the teachers, scholars, I think should carry more research work, how to introduce an existing modern education field, you see, education about our inner values, mind questions, uh, mind or, or, or emotions like that. Then I think this university, I think quite appropriate, the very name, because of Amberka. Uh, Dr. Amberka. You see, he, you see, I think, uh, showing special interest about the Buddha Dharma. Uh, I think he, uh, uh, so, you see, his follower, I think, Thousands, thousands of sort of, what's the day, low cost, low cost. This is showing interest about Buddha Dharma. One big shoe. I know follower of Amperka Kazako Ming, this is happening. What is it? Nagul Yuri. Kaza, Nagul Yuri, Kaza. One big shoe. Oh, I think Ananda Gosha, I think. Yeah, now no longer. Uh, so like that, you see, there are, among his followers, I think there are good pictures. Uh, but uh, it seems to me not adequate knowledge about the Buddha Dharma. So these, of course, consider themselves as a Buddhist. So, knowledge about Buddha Dharma is very important. I often telling, you see, Buddha Shanam Gajami, Dhamma Shanam Gajami, Sangamasana Gajami, not sufficient. I always, I often, you see, telling Chinese Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist, any Buddhist in Himalayan range, I telling, those Buddhists should be 21st century Buddhist. That means Buddhist faith. Out of there's an understanding about whole Buddha's teaching or system of Buddha Dharma. As I mentioned earlier, Buddha Dharma, particularly Nalanda tradition, based on reason, not faith. So therefore, uh, those Buddhists, of course, follow on Kasa, uh, Dr. Amberka, I often used to tell them, you see, please pay uh, more attention for study. Then, general public, I think knowledge 
about mind, about emotion, irrespective of whether believer or non-believer. Uh, I think in ancient sort of Indian literature, Buddhist, non-Buddhist, say, in all ancient these sort of tradition, different philosophical thought, philosophical school of thought. You see, a lot of information about emotion, about mind. Now this consider as a secular uh, academic subject and should include. So I'm looking forward. Next meeting, some examination about, you see, psychology. And not just a modern psychology. Uh, I often see telling a modern psychology compare ancient Indian psychology, uh, then modern psychology looks like a kindergarten level. A <laughs> uh, lot of information in ancient Indian psychology uh, about mind, I think really very, very rich. So I think the, uh, the Dr. Ambedkar's university, I think eventually, hopefully, should include one class study these things. Then I often used to telling to my Indian friend, India, I think out of about 200 nations on this planet, I think only India have the ability to combine modern technology, modern education with ancient Indian sort of knowledge about inner world, combine these two things. Then, I think you, this country, Bharat, a great nation, most populated democratic country, I think can make significant contribution for well-being of seven billion human beings. So, please think, if you have no interest, then forget it, forget, no problem. If you uh, have some interest, uh, think more, and particularly teachers, you see, think more, and uh, uh, and how, how, to, how, to, how, how, to, how to teach. Yeah. Firstly, we need the curriculum, the text about these things. Actually, I think tomorrow I am going to meet Kasa, Tata Universities. Now, they also are working that. Uh, and some American institution also, you see, some university also, you see, uh, doing some research. And then in America, see, few cities, you see, they, their name, that very name of city, some city, one city, they, they call city of kindness. And another one, city of compassion. Their own initiative, right, out of their own initiative. So uh, uh, with that name, within the city, you see, they carry some more sort of activities uh, regarding compassion or kindness. As a result, within the city, students are much more peaceful and much sort of willingness to serve others. So therefore, uh, I think education, uh, I think this very name makes differences. So then more study about emotion is I think something very useful. So that I want to, to tell you. And then those graduate right, student. See, you achieve one level. Uh, this knowledge, with this knowledge, now you, can, you have to carry your life in different fields. So it is quite natural. There are always obstacles, difficulties. So when we face some difficulties, you see, we often, you see, people demoralize. That is absolutely wrong, no matter how sort of difficulties 
we have potential. And also, you see, if we carry our life more truthful, honest way, then your life becomes transparent. With transparency, you find more friends, more supporters. Without these human good quality, very good education, very brilliant mind, but you see, too much self-centered attitude, then hypocrisy, uh, showing something different, but inside something different. Then nobody trusts you. Finally, the person will be a very lonely person. If you carry your life honest, truthful, transparent, then uh, you will be one good human being of the society. Okay, that I want to tell you. So, young, educated, graduate people uh, should be more kaza, uh, optimistic way, optimistic way. Okay, when you uh, are with too much expectation and some slight sort of obstacle come, oh, then completely lost your kasuda, uh, kasuda, hope, hope or determination. That's wrong. Look, look at me, 81 year old, uh, since a young age, my life go through a lot of difficulties, problems. I never lose, I never lose way. I never lose my determination. I believe power of truth, honest. So, uh, so with that, we can keep our optimism. That's important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, with your permission, I wish to request the graduates to repeat after me the oath pledging their allegiance to the degree conferred on them. Dear graduates, please rise and keep standing and repeat after me. Conscious of the responsibility my education vests in me, I promise always and ever in thought and in deed with courage and compassion to strive for justice, equality and the pursuit of truth for the well-being of the planet, of my fellow human beings, and all things living. Dear graduates, please sit. Sir, may I have your permission to declare the convocation closed? 
with the permission of the chancellor i declare the fifth annual convocation of ambedkar university delhi closed i request the chancellor the chief guest guests the uh, the university community and the graduates and students to stand up for the national anthem Yeah. 